want to talk here about uh, uh, our mental life and uh, in particular about fantasies of um, being harmed by violence or fantasies of achieving perfect re revenge for having been harmed. Um, the intense situations in which a person might need to use violence are rare for most of us. Nevertheless, it is a good idea to be ready for it. Uh, I approve of uh, disciplines like Aikido, uh, which is a martial art, in which one of the main principles is to take care of the opponent's welfare as well as your own. Other martial arts also have the common elements of uh, fitness, both physical and mental preparation, and situational awareness. And all of those are part of nonviolence as well. Um, and achieving them is part of the process of learning nonviolence. Gandhi held that not being violent because of weakness isn't truly nonviolent. Uh, it's just passive and, uh, if you will, wimpy. The implication is that we should be skilled and, and strong enough to use violence, but choose other ways of solving problems almost all the time. Uh, those other ways of solving problems include um, learning constructive skills. Um, and in the process, almost everyone becomes more creative because they'll extrapolate from the examples of nonviolence that they learn about and uh, generalize to uh, a wider range of situations. Um, we can also take common sense precautions to increase our security. Uh, we can maintain good relationships with other people in our lives rather than isolating ourselves or being an abusive person. And I, by that, I don't mean that we have to suck up to others so that they won't hurt us. I, having good relationships with others is part of having a healthy, uh, normal life. Uh, but isolated people do become targets of opportunity. And there are people out there whose business is to uh, take advantage of others and to abuse others. We have to recognize that. And abusive people risk the retaliation of other people who feel disrespected by them. <laughs> we don't want, want to be that, that person either. We should recognize our real vulnerabilities and be prepared for the threats that come up in our corner of the world. But to the extent possible, we should try to live as a free person, not a person oppressed by fears and thoughts of danger. In the US, of course, many individuals devolve to firearms as a way of being ready for threats and crises, and then fall prey to the overconfidence of another fantasy that when the time comes, they will be able to use their guns successfully to defend themselves without anyone else getting hurt. For many reasons, that is a cognitive trap. And it leads people into <clears throat> uh, not only having guns available and ready to hand in their homes and uh, elsewhere, <clears throat> but um, it leads to accidents that harm or kill people unintentionally. It leads to the escalation of domestic disputes to a deadly level. We have domestic violence all over the world, sadly, but only in the United States is there a, a high level of deaths and injuries due to the use of firearms. <clears throat> uh, this mindset also leads to failures of self-defense when that is actually needed. 
the fantasy of perfect uh, use of firearms is it is just that it's a fantasy. A whole lot of things have to go in your favor in a very short period of time in order for you to use a gun successfully for self-defense. And there's the murderous horror of mass shootings by individuals with grievances they cannot manage in any peaceful way um, and who haven't been helped by because of whatever circumstances in their lives. It's sad that we spend much of our lives fantasizing about scary but low probability situations in which our lives might be threatened and yet do so little to prepare for those situations mentally and physically. <laughs>